Good morning and welcome to Farmdale. We are so glad that you're here with us today. Whether you're a regular attendee or a first time visitor, we're excited for you to be here with us. Hershey's excited too. We'd like to get to know you a little bit better so we can help connect you to all the things the Lord has happening here. At our Welcome Center, we have connect cards where you can fill out your information, leave it there, and someone will get back with you this week. There's a lot happening here, so let's take a look at some things taking place. Good morning, Farmdale. Mark your calendars for July 30th and August 6th. Those two Sundays will be our baptism Sundays, and we're going to celebrate what God is doing and some of the, the lives of individuals in our church that are publicly professing Jesus um, as Lord. And so I want to encourage you, if God is doing a work in you, and you want to uh, just sort of outwardly express an inward work, that's what we view, that's how we view bap baptism, that it's an outward expression of an inward work of God. And so we want to encourage you, if the Lord is um, doing a, a new work in you, please reach out to me. You can give me a call um, on my cell phone, which is area code 314-827-8980. You can also talk to me. You can shoot me an email, dusty at farmdale.org. Um, however you want to communicate with me, we would love to have you as a part um, of those baptism Sundays. Also, August 27th is going to be a membership class that we're going to have directly after that morning worship. Um, we're going to meet in the Hebrews Cafe and uh, we'll have some uh, pizza and some things like that. As, as you need to prepare for about three hours of a membership class, but there will be a sign up sheet outside on the welcome center if you'll just sign your name and your contact info really just a cell phone number is all we need um, that will that would be a great help to us in, in moving forward and how to plan so looking forward to what the lord is doing and excited to to see how god is going to continue to move in farmdale farmdale campers today is the last day to sign up and pay for the annual church camping trip at buffalo trace Please see Tony or Crystal Portman after church to reserve your spot.
Like I said, we have a lot happening here at Farmdale, and we would love for you to be a part of it with us. We believe when we gather together to worship, God's presence is here with us. So please stand with us now as we worship together. Amen. Good morning, Farmdale. Good morning. Great to see everybody this morning. And uh, hey, I'm ready to worship being in the house of the Lord. Father, thank you for this day, for your blessings, God. May your presence be in this place. We lift you high. We love you. We thank you for all that you've blessed us with in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship. Lord, you are good and your mercy do it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy and do it forever. From every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Sing that again. We worship you. Your mercy into it forever. Lord, you are good in your mercy into it forever. People from every nation and town, from generation to generation, we worship. good all the time all the time you are good you are good all the time all the time you are good you are good all the time all the time you are good you are good all the time all the time you are good Lord, you are good in your mercy and do it forever. Lord, you are good in your mercy and do it forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we Forty-eight, thirteen says, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone Amen. is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. to praise the 
forward and um, our ushers to prepare for our offering this morning and uh, once again I just want to remind you that uh, we are a family here nobody is going through anything alone God is here today your family is here today bring it bring it forward and leave it with Jesus this morning
Amen. We're going to go into our time of prayer now. Um, it's going to be a little bit different this morning. Um, how's everyone doing? Amen. Amen. So uh, I want to invite those who are going to teen camp, kids camp, the chaperones, the teens, the kids, as well as those who have uh, gift bags uh, for them. I want to invite you up and we want to pray with you all this morning. I don't know how many. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just stand up here. It'll be fine. So we fight against not flesh and blood, but against darkness, powers and principalities. And when you fight against that, you can't fight against it with your fist. It's impossible. No matter how tough you are, even if you think you're the hope, you know, you can't fight against it with your fist. But we war with the spirit, right? And that's one reason why we're going to pray over them today, um, to cover them. Um, to encourage them um, in the war against anything that might go against them as their way uh, or anything that might go against what God has for them. So I'm going to pray out loud. Um, you can pray um, at your seat as well for everyone up here. Um, but let's do that now. Father, we thank you, O Lord Jesus, for who you are. We thank you for each and every human being in this place and outside of this place, we thank you for creating us all, and we thank you for creating us with a purpose. We want to pray, O oh Lord Jesus, for our teens, the chaperones, everyone involved, as well as the kids, um, as they go away uh, to this camp. We pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that you rebuke all evil spirits that may come their way. We know that they will get attacked, O oh Lord Jesus, but we ask you to Camp angels all around them to keep back the darkness, to keep back the evil one, O oh Lord Jesus. Don't let the evil one fog their mind, O oh Lord Jesus, from the things that you're trying to say to them. But we ask you, O oh Lord Jesus, to just speak to them because we need you to speak to us too as well. We need to hear from you, O oh Lord Jesus. By your word, everything was created, O oh Lord Jesus, and we need to hear from you. So we ask you, O oh Lord Jesus, to lead us and guide us um, as we move forward, O oh Lord Jesus, in the path that you would have us to go. And we ask you to affirm us in what you have for us. I ask for the teens and the kids as they explore, O oh Lord Jesus, the things that you put on their hearts uh, and the things that they think you might be having them to do, O oh Lord Jesus, make room for them um, to discover those things and speak to them in whatever way that they need. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for the chaperones and their willingness to go as well. Uh, we know you have something for them as well. Uh, fill them with your spirit, O oh Lord Jesus. Rebuke all evil spirits from around them, O oh Lord Jesus, and help them to know that you love them too. Um, even when we're at teen camp, we mess up sometimes as leaders. Uh, we don't always handle things the right way. But we ask you, O oh Lord Jesus, to help us to remember that um, you will forgive us as we ask, O oh Lord Jesus. You are gentle, you are kind, and you didn't come to condemn us, but you want to save us. Um, God, you are a good God. We thank you for who you are, uh, and we thank you for this time of prayer. I also want to pray uh, for everyone in the congregation. There are needs here that I don't know. Uh, there are testimonies here that might be wanting to be shared, but not able to be shared at this time. But we thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing that's good. Uh, we know that you're a good God, and even in the bad, O oh Lord Jesus, help us to submit that to you, uh, whether it's in our tears, on our knees, uh, in whatever we might be, help us to submit that to you, uh, knowing, O oh Lord Jesus, that you can work something good out of that, that you can put those bad pieces together and make something good. I thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for the troubles that I've went through. I thank you for the troubles that we all have went through because you prepared us 
to reach other people. Uh, you prepared us for the next step um, that you have for us, O oh Lord Jesus, and help us to keep that mindset. Even in the troubles, O oh Lord Jesus, if we submit it to you, you're preparing us for all that you would have us to do, O oh Lord Jesus. You are a good God, and we pray, O oh Lord Jesus, for each and every one of these individuals on this stage, in this place, and outside of this place. Help us to keep our eyes towards you when we absolutely don't know what to do. Help us to keep our eyes on you, hallelujah, that you may uh, free us from whatever thing that we're in and lead us into that abundant life that you have for us. Cover us with your spirit and your blood in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming up here for prayer. Continue to pray, pray throughout camp, and they have bags over here for you all. Amen. That's right. Um, this is kind of like a testimony. I'm just going to move into this. Man, are we thankful for Jenny this morning? Are we thankful for Jenny? Um, man, she has just to, to be able on the outside, Jenny, to be able to sit out there and watch and then even watch over webcam 
um, as, as we're seeing these online on YouTube, and what you have collectively done with this group of people. You've invested, absolutely. You've invested into their lives, you've poured into them, you have led them, and you have done it selflessly. So this role, this is a tough role, folks. It's a tough role. There's a lot of planning, a lot of preparation, countless hours. And Jenny, had, she just gives herself to the Lord and to the church and the dedication of the church. She serves on the church board. She, is, she voluntarily stepped in to help with youth. She has voluntarily stepped in to help with worship. And in doing so has just created such a mighty army for the Lord and has led these people well. Can we just kind of give it up for Jenny? As this is her last official Sunday. Yeah. I am super thankful as a, as a, as a worship pastor for many years, walking in and seeing this type of leadership makes this work a whole lot easier for me. And Jenny has stepped in, filled those shoes, done an outstanding job, and I am richly blessed to have her on the team continuously week over week from this point on with her, with her voice as well. So Jenny, the whole team got together, <laughs> and, and we wanted to bless you with something. You know, I was like, you know, what are some things that Jenny likes to like? She likes to get her nails done. I was like, perfect, I can do her nails for her. I'm really good with it. I've got three daughters. Like, does it have to be in the lines? Because if not, that's where I'm at. But we have collectively raised some, some, some money, some funds for you to enjoy yourself. Um, what an outstanding mother, wife, and just servant of the Lord that you have been for Farmdale. So we, uh, we all love and appreciate you. So. Can I just say that? It's not me, it's God. I've been a closet karaoke -er for my whole entire <laughs> life. And, uh, and so God is the one who said, this is where you're supposed to be. And he gave me the courage to get up here and to do this. So thank you very much, but it's all God. Thank you. Amen. All right. We are dismissed, worship team. What a family. What a family. Today is a special day, as you have already seen and have heard. You know, if you're new to Farmdale, we want to say welcome. This is, we are broken people serving a unbroken God. We're messed up. Jesus isn't. And we're, pers we're pursuing him constantly. And so, you are welcome here. Um, we want to say greetings to you. This is a little bit different of a service, but we're celebrating again as a family. And so we're celebrating each other. We're celebrating the goodness of God and what he's doing and answered prayers because I believe that and that God answers prayers. And as we prayed, we remember, we committed, if you remember a few months ago, we committed ourselves to Jesus. And we committed this church to him through prayer and through fasting, seeking to do what he's called us to do, um, not having all the details, but sort of walking in trust that the Lord's got us, and just knowing that he's going to answer prayers. And so we celebrate this morning, Anne, that your daughter, that grand, the granddaughter, Courtney, she is, we're praying that it sticks. And so God is at work, he's answering prayers, and as we continue to pray, we want to say, give it to the Lord. Whatever your heart is seeking, give it to him, because the psalm is true, that when our delight is in Jesus, he gives us the desires of our heart. And that's not a prosperity scripture, but it's this idea that as our hearts align with him and our delight is in what he does, he gives us, like a good father, the things not only that we need, but we want, because we don't ever want anything outside of his will. And so I'm just so thankful to get to be a part of, um, of this church and what the Lord is doing here. Um, just a couple housekeeping things. Like I said, this is a little different this morning because this morning is our ministry fair. And right directly after the service, I want to invite every person to give up five minutes, ten minutes of your time 
Um, we thought about putting bouncers at the door so no one could leave and just sort of funneling everyone into the gym. Um, we've got booths set up in the gym of the ministries of Farmdale. And th- some of the things that are, we've, we currently are doing and a couple new things that we're going to be doing. Um, but we want to encourage you. What we have said from the very beginning is that this takes a, a village. It takes a team. And God has brought you here not just because this is what you check off your list, but he's brought you here because he actually wants to do a work in you. And he actually wants to bring other people into the fold through you. And so we need everybody's, all hands on deck, right? Everybody's help we need um, to, to move forward as we are going into what the Lord is calling us to as a church. So um, when we're going to dismiss after the service. Like I said, this is just some housekeeping things. I want to encourage you to walk down the hall. Um, you're going to, once we let everyone in the gym, like I said, it's going to be five minutes, ten minutes. You get to decide how long you want to be there. Um, there's booths set up in the gym that you can just walk around, see what the ministries are, talk to the leaders. You will be given a card, a, a ministry option card, where you can put your name on it. And then you can also write the ministries that you would like to participate in, explore, be involved in. You write those down, and then you'll put them as you leave the gym You'll put them in a basket on the table as soon as you walk in the door. Very simple rules um, to to all of it. It's easy. We're asking for five minutes of your time to to do that so that you can see where God might be calling you to lead. And so I'm excited about this opportunity because the Lord is at work. And as we are planning, just like Nehemiah planned, it takes planning to do what God calls us to do. But it also takes his grace and it takes our trust in him to lead us. Amen? Amen. And we're trusting that he's going to lead us. And so we'll mention that again towards the end. But now I want to transition to, again, what this church is about. We're about Jesus. And as Jesus called us, we also are about his mission. And his mission locally here in this area and in the Kentucky area, but also, guess what, church? Across the world. His mission across the world. I love what Isaiah 49, 6 says says this, and he says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. This is the Old Testament. God has always been about his glory across the nations. And as a church here at Farmdale, locally, we also care very much about the nations. And through our leadership, through Karen, who is our NMI director, which means Nazarene Missions International Director, um, she helps to oversee and helps to provide opportunities, opportunities for us as a church to go and be a part of what God's doing across the world. And so this morning, we want to take just a moment. I'm going to invite all of those who went to Africa... Um, went on the trip to Africa. If you'll just come and sit right here in the first few chairs at this time. We've got a a couple others that aren't here that did go um, with us as well. Eric Hensley and also Stacy Banks. And um, so they're not here with us this morning, but we're thankful for them. We've got a short video that we want you to watch, and we want to just sort of give you a report of what took place in Africa. So let's watch this short video. I 
say is thank you um, to you all for supporting us to be able to go in the first place. Um, and the second thing is I want to thank Karen for putting it together, even though she didn't get to it. Um, <laughs> without Karen, we would not have been there. Um, but also without you all, we would not have been there. You guys were very generous in what you gave and how you prayed and how you helped us, um, whether it was snack attacks or just sending money straight to the trip itself and building the buildings. And without that, 
um, we would not have been able to do, and they would not be able to have what they have. So the Kentucky district is very, very, very loved over there in Africa. Um, um, God, I'm still kind of unpacking um, what God wanted me um, to learn through this trip. So um, every day I learn something new about what he wanted me to learn and see and understand through being there. Um, I wanted to share some things that he kind of taught me right off the bat. And the first thing is that you have to be flexible in ministry. I've known that since my very first work in witness because Karen always says that fl the blessed are flexible. Ble flexible or blessed, I don't remember which way it goes. Um, but she says that, and it's very true. Um, because if we come into ministry of any kind with these really huge expectations, um, most likely we're going to be let down. If we had the expectation that we were going to go to Africa and save their lives and change the world and um, build all these massive buildings, they, don't need our, they didn't need our help. Um, and as a matter of fact, they're very patient for letting us help them. <laughs> um, because most of the paint and the scaffolding, which is cement, ended up on the ground. So uh, we probably wasted more than actually got on the building. Um, but they don't need us. So if we went over there with that expectation, we would have left disappointed. Um, but we did get to go over there, and we got to share in ministry with them and be a part of something that we raised money for um, to, for their benefit. I mean, we benefit, it, we benefit from it from the kingdom of God because he blesses us with what we give. But, um, but he, we blessed them, and God blessed them. And they're going to be able to use those buildings and be in churches, not under trees, for years and years and years and years. Um, and the next thing is what I learned is if you're measuring fulfillment off possessions or money, that you'll always be empty. The people that I met over there in Africa were so kind, they were so generous, the most God-loving people I've probably ever met. Um, and they loved well. And they weren't rich in possessions and things, but they were rich in love. And um, the only thing that we're going to be able to take with us to heaven is ourselves. We're not going to have the things that we accumulate here on earth. Um, and if that's what, and I believe uh, focusing so much on possession and gain and what we gain out of the world, it not only hinders our joy, but it hinders um, God's work. Um, and then the last thing I learned for, through doing this was, not the last thing, it won't be the last thing, but the last thing I noted um, is when the body of Christ works together, really good things happen. I got to be, I got to know, witness with my own eyes what it looks like when the body of Christ is ten fingers and ten toes down for whatever the vision is. Um, Friday had a vision for the sinner. He drew it on a piece of paper and... From that moment, Friday said yes to whatever it was. Friday was saying yes to whatever God had for him when he answered the call to be a missionary. But when God gave him that vision for the sinner, he said yes, and he hit the ground running. Um, and ever since then, God put people, because Friday, um, Friday prays, he is committed to that vision and whatever the mission is. But he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he got in the car with Karen, and Karen backed him up on that vision. And then the Kentucky District backed Karen up on that vision in Friday. And then all of you all backed all of us up on that vision as well. Um, and without that, I mean, Friday would have found a way, I believe. But without it, it would have been a lot harder. Um, but I want to say that when, and I want to read from 1 Peter, um, 1 Peter 2, 4 through 10 first. And it's the living stone and a chosen people. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, I say, lay a stone in Zion, a chosen precious cornerstone, and one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to, now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders reject it has become a cornerstone, and the stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal peace priesthood, a holy nation, a special, God's special possession, that you may declare his praises um, his praises of him 
who call out of darkness into his, um, into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. And once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And I picked that because um, at the church we went to the first time, um, we literally have a cornerstone in there, and his name is Hudson. Um, he bought seven blocks, and it's in the corner of the church. And, um, and Hudson is a little boy, and he doesn't, I mean, I'm sure he has allowance, but he went around and he felt moved to ask people to donate to build a church in Africa, and that's what he did. But not only is Hudson one of seven of those blocks in that church, but you all are blocks in those, that church as well. You are blocks in this church. Um, we have pillars to this church. Um, and your ministries and your works and your mission, whether it's here or over there, is so important. And it's also so, so important that whether you're not the person starting the ministry, but you're the, per the people backing the ministry. Because without the people, Friday would have had a harder time. But with the people, Friday got to start something and grow something that ch will change lives forever. Um, and that's what it looks like when the body of Christ is all working together. I was watching a video the other day that I shared with the young adults that said, what would you do if you woke up and 50% of your body decided it didn't want to work that day? It would be really, really hard to complete whatever task it was that you were supposed to do. If 50% of the people told Friday no, it would have hindered a lot in his, in his path to complete that. Um, if 50% of our team decided we didn't want to work that day, it would have been a lot harder to get the work done that we were supposed to. Um, but when 100% of the body of Christ is working, it can't be stopped. And I don't want to be stopped. And because I witnessed what I witnessed, and I didn't need Africa to make me love work and witness or um, make me love the work of God, but it solidified and strengthened my, my knowledge of what it looks like when the body of Christ works together. So my encouragement to you is to keep supporting Work and Witness, but it is always, every time I leave Work and Witness, to keep supporting your church's ministries because it's important and it goes far beyond these four walls. And you are a cornerstone um, in your church, in your community, um, and it goes... And what happens when you're supporting a ministry, it brings the people in and it changes lives and it's so, so important. So that's all I have for you today. I'm not as brave as they are. I'd trip on this and fall, and you would all die laughing. And uh, I'm a great faller. Um, one of the days we were at the camp, and uh, I decided to sit in this chair, and we were all sharing stories about sitting in plastic chairs. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, God has a sense of humor, and I always get to be the, the brunt of the jokes. And so I was sitting there, and there were some kids over here sitting. And all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but I fell out of the chair, broke the chair, falling, and it was slow motion. Everybody's like, she's falling. And it was that slow. What was funny, because these kids over here, every time they saw me, they would point, and then they would do this, sit like this, and fall over. I don't know what they told their parents about me. I'm sure it was something hilarious, but, um, you know, it's just my, my measure or uh, my trademark is just make sure you fall, but do it gracefully. And, uh, and that's what I did. I fell, not just falling, but fell in love with people of Africa. And uh, they were gracious. And I thought about Dusty's message last week about abundance. We have abundance. And in their eyes, they have an abundance. But their abundance is far less than we ever have. And uh, one of the things that one of the churches was able to do, um, how many of you have more than one refrigerator in your house? Quite a few. How many have always had a refrigerator in their house? 
Well, Edson and Ida had lived in the uh, in the uh, DS's office or home there for seven years and never had a refrigerator. And one of the churches bought them a refrigerator. Of course, they had to go to town and had to figure out about the electricity and how many wattages and this and that. And Eric was helpful in, you know, making sure they got the right amount and the right one that would fit. And they surprised Ida and Edson with this refrigerator. And that was Ed, uh, Ida bawling her eyes out and looking at this massive refrigerator. And uh, for seven years... They'd go to the store every day to the market to get what they need to keep fresh for just the day and then have to go back each day. And they provided food for us, and, of course, they wanted it to be fresh for us as well. Um, so they plugged in the refrigerator, or they set it up, and they had to wait 12 hours before they could plug it in. They sat up all night and waited for that, the 12 hour, and Edson and his wife and their four children sat there and they were, like, so excited to plug it in. And uh, he had to come pick us up that morning. And he says, I, I, I'm so tired. And we're like, why are you tired? He said, we waited to plug in the refrigerator. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And he said, and then we watched, and we'd open the door and shut the door. The lights came on. The temperature was going up and down. And, uh, and he started bawling as he's, we're in the car with him. He's driving, and he's like, he said, oh, my. He said, we never thought we'd ever have a refrigerator. Well, we went that day. Guess what they put in the refrigerator? We always had pop every day. We had Coke and Sprite. They have their own Pepsi company, Coke company in Tanzania, and it's in the bottles. And we'd always have bottle pop for us or water. Well, it was always warm. Ida and Edson filled that refrigerator up with every bottle of Coke and water that they could fit in there. And we're like, no, no, it's for your food. And she goes and shows me. She's got two tomatoes in there. <laughs> she's, well, we use it. <laughs> so, um, but just the abundance that we have, and we don't appreciate it. And what little abundance they have, and they appreciate it. There wasn't a picture on here, but... That one service that we were at, I was counting, I was paying attention, but there were kids over here on a, a tarp, and I was counting, and the first row I counted was 22 kids along the wall. I was like, wow, I wonder how many there are. So I started counting as the teacher I am. I got to 120. These 120 kids were sitting on this mat. There were no adults around them. There was nobody directing them. They didn't have an iPhone. They didn't have a, a coloring sheet. They didn't have anything. They sat there, and some sat there with, they were like six or seven years old and had the baby with them. And there were some parents in the back. And I asked, I said, well, where's all their parents? They're not here. They let their kids come to the churches, and they have abundance of kids. And they kept saying, this is our next generation. I think that's what we heard at District Assembly, our next generation. 120 plus kids sat there, and we watched them. They weren't talking. They weren't making a sound. They were watching the people. We were watching them and watching the people. Abundance of kids. And uh, Edson had told us, he said, you know, he said, whenever we're here, the kids will come. They have free public education, but the kids don't go to school. If the parents never went to school, they don't value school, so the kids don't go. And so they'll come on the compound and just hang around, and that's what they were doing while we were there. They were watching us and watching them paint and watch the guys stucco and watch. Uh, we would play games with them, whatever. And he said, uh, matter of fact, he said, four of these kids are the witch doctor's kids that just lives down the street. I said, will they get in trouble if they come to church here or, or do anything or learn something? Will they be in trouble when they go home? He says, nope. He said, you know what they do? They go home and share it with their dad and their mom. And we made little crosses and uh, out of popsicle sticks, and those kids carried them so carefully down home. And when they came back for church on Sunday, several of them were wearing them. He said, 
That's their toys. They don't have toys. That was their gift. We should be ashamed of ourselves for the things that we have and we collect and we need more of and the more toys we have. They have the joy that's far out exceeds the toys, the things that we collect. The last thing that we were able to do is we were able to put bunk beds in the dormitories there. And you know God's hands in it, and you wonder why this comes up or this comes up. But I work over at Overflow with Bob McCabe, and we had gotten lots of these. <laughs> and I was like, look, Bob, Africa. He's like, what are we going to do with those? I said, I don't know. They came from Target. Our Target here in Louisville had, had these, 37 of them. I said, can I have them? He said, well, what are you going to do with them? I said, I'm taking them to Africa. And they asked me again, what are you going to do with them? I said, I don't know yet. I said, God will tell me. And what it was is we were able to go in the dormitories. And if, if you saw the dormitories, the, the double-decker beds, that's what they call them, double-deckers, they took their mattresses off when they came to district assembly and just slept on the springs because they've never slept on mattresses. They didn't know any different. The mattresses, Karen, still have the plastic on them. They didn't even take the plastic off. Um, and they laid those on the floor, but nobody slept on them. They were afraid to, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we had the opportunity to go in there, and we made these, and we put a scripture on them. And we hoped and prayed over each one that whoever slept in those beds would be anointed by God and know. Now, all our scriptures were in English, but uh, Edson said he's going to do something and maybe have somebody write it out in Swahili. But uh, we prayed over each bed there for every person that sleeps in that bed. We didn't know the day that we were having the uh, service on Sunday the tribe and group that lit, it was at that first church walked two days to come to the district assembly, uh, to the camp area, and spent the nights there so that they could participate in church on Sunday. Two days, carrying everything they needed, carrying their babies, and it was at least, wasn't it about 45, 50 minute car ride for us. And they walked that whole route to be there, to sing to worship, to dance. They not only did that, they brought their food with them. So whatever food they were eating, they brought. They stayed two days longer. And think, all they had was what they could carry on their backs or carry on their heads. But they brought their own provisions. They didn't ask for anything. We should look at ourselves and say, what can I get rid of? What can I sacrifice? What can I give to help someone else? We have an abundance, and there's people that have less than we do and are so grateful for it. And Karen, this is for you. It's signed by all the people that were in Africa, Edson and Mary and Friday and uh, the ones in the, in the kitchen that work there and for you to hang on your bed or hang in your room wherever you want. Thank you. I don't want her to embarrass herself today and fall. <laughs> I'm going to kind of feed off a little bit of what she said uh, when she fell, it was very graceful. Like I was, sit I was sitting right beside her, and we're just like, did she fall? So I give her that. She does it gracefully. Um, I'm Michelle Jones. I go to Southern Hills uh, Church of the Nazarene. Uh, this, my first work and witness trip was last year when we went to Rescue Hill in Texas. And... That was the beginning of a life change for me. We went to um, the very first prayer house for the Church of the Nazarene ever, and the foundation was still there on the ground. 
and the team that went, we sat there in the prayer house. And I had been searching for my sanctification. And when we sat there and we prayed, I could immediately feel the Lord talking to me. And then this trip going to Tanzania, my joy is just, it's, it has been found. Not only did we bless the people of Tanzania with help and then everybody's monetary gifts and being there with them, fellowshipping with them, but it's the love. We felt so welcomed and loved by D.S. Edson and his wife and family and uh, Mary and Friday that it was like we were right here with family. And it was just overwhelming to, to see that. And knowing that they have so little, even in food, and the way that they would feed us, and not just once a day, folks. We had breakfast at 8 o'clock every day. We would go from there to the DS Center, and we would uh, fellowship a little bit, have a devotion, and then we would go out and start working. We would come back inside to the DS's house. We would have tea and what they call biscuits, but we all called them donuts because they look like little mini donuts. And then we would go back out, we would work again. We would come back in again anywhere from 1, 1, 32 o'clock. We would have lunch. And then we would go back out and sometimes work or sometimes we would head back to the hotel to because, like they said, it was a 45, 50-minute drive, freshen up, and then we would have dinner again at 6. These meals consisted of way more than I eat at home. Not that you can tell by looking, but anyway. Um, they have either rice, fish, or beef every meal. They have, I mean, uh, fish, chicken, or beef every meal. They have some type of rice. They have some type of potato, some type of bean, some type of fruit. What else am I missing? Uh, I mean, so this is a well, huh? Oh, yes, and some type of soup, even at breakfast, every meal. So, I mean, they fed us well. And for, to see them especially Miss Ida, when we gave the refrigerator, it just, my heart sank. I mean, she was so thankful to be blessed with that. And, and then, like they said, we go in the next day, and they've got it filled with soda and water for us. And then we got to looking in the freezer. She had put some bags of beans in the, some bags of peas in the freezer and some different stuff like that. And as the day went on, she put a watermelon in the fridge and some more tomatoes and different stuff like that. But I think one of the biggest blessings I got there was working with those children. I have physical limitations, so I was worried about would I be able to serve and fulfill the mission on my part. And getting there and seeing those children, you've seen pictures. We would just sit on the floor, on the ground with them, and just try to talk. Some of them could speak a little bit of English. Some of them could not. And, and they got to learn photo or picture, and they'd run up to you and be like, photo, photo. And a lot of that was because of April. Uh, but it was because she also had some of the little immediate ones, the old-time Polaroid things, and she would take pictures of them and give them to them. They were so amazed with that. And then they would take them home and share them, and then the next day they would bring them back. But then they would want more. So just being there working with those children was just a true blessing to me, knowing that this is the future of Tanzania. And then I got to help in the kitchen some. And one of the ladies in there, her name was Miss Winnie. And it was towards the end of the trip, and she and I were, we clicked real, real quick. I don't know what it was, but we clicked. And every day, as soon as we'd see each other, she'd be like, hi, Michelle, I love you. And I'd say, hi, Winnie, I love you. And we were sitting talking towards the end of the trip, one of the last days, and I commented on a bracelet she had on. She literally took it off that second and put it on my arm and said, here, this is yours, Michelle. And to know they don't have much and for her to do that, it just, 
It touched my heart, and I will forever hang on. I will forever keep that. So, I don't, and just in gist, if the Lord is telling you, listen to him. Because I never pictured work and witness as my thing. But now that I've been on two, I'm praying there's more and more. Um, and like they said, if you're abun- in abundance of anything... Figure out where you can share that at. And the people of Tanzania, they love each and every one of you, and they're grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to invite our praise team to come up. As you were uh, speaking and sharing about Tanzania, I had a scripture that just popped in my head, and I want to read it. It's found in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 10, and it says this, And after this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne to the Lamb. And I just love this, because it it was just giving a picture of the work that you all were doing um, over there, and the work that we do here, it matters, just like April said, like, it matters that we are all a part of one body. And one day, we will be standing there with those from Africa, from Uganda, from the Congo. We will be standing there from those from Paraguay, from Mexico, from Brazil, all saying and singing praises to God. He is our salvation. And so we thank the Lord for the work that God is doing and has done through you all I know, Karen, I'm pretty sure there's a, another trip coming up, 2024 possibly. And where is that to? In Nicaragua. And so if, if you want to be a part of that, you will be hearing more information um, as we move forward towards that. So thank you, team, for sharing what the Lord is doing um, and has done. And uh, blessings on you for leading the way and for being a part of that. I want to invite you all to stand this morning. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to close out, and we're going to sing. And we're going to celebrate. And I just want you, as we sing, just remember that verse. Just picture yourself standing before God with all nations and tribes and tongues, singing praises to our God and our King. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus, for the work that you have done in and through all of those who went to Tanzania this past few weeks. I just pray, Lord, that that work would continue on as we are seeking to do your mission here at Farmdale, in Louisville, in Kentucky, God, that you would give us that same trust, that same love, because it's not some program that's going to change the world. It's not some strategy that's going to change the world. It's a heart that is in love with you above everything else and loves other people well. So more than the strategies and our plans, God, I pray, God, you would give us that type of love in our heart for each other and for those around us. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing, for it's in your name we pray. Amen.
Forget church, we have the ministry fair in the back. Please make your way there. We have bouncers, as, as Pastor Dusty said, so don't try to leave. <laughs> 